I wasn't going to be able to do it without help. I knew that. And I could end up losing all, all the goats. <laughs> Okay, so I I didn't have my camera really ready or really even the emotional ability to stop and record what was happening very often. Um, but one thing I did do was I tried to post some updates to my friends and family. Um, and I used Facebook for that. And I actually found that social media was a great resource for figuring out what to do and telling people what our status was and when we needed help and when we were safe and things like that. Um, because it was really challenging to, to get through this and I don't think we would have been able to do it at all alone. Um, so to start telling the story on September 9th, it, late in the day was when we first started to really think this could be a problem that could affect us before we were, we were talking more about how could we help other people? How, you know, we were very concerned for, for what was happening, but it was less on, uh, how it infects impacts us and more on other people. So September 9th, we were looking outside and worrying about what to do. And that's when we started to come up with our plan. Um, and my, my fear was that we didn't have really a good idea of what we were going to do with our animals. And I wasn't going to leave this property without minimally without my goats because they are I would equate them to people who are very close with their dogs and cats um, I spend a lot of time with these animals I don't think of them as food they are um, my friends and companions and so I wasn't I was not going to leave without them. <laughs> um, and so we started by reaching out to friends on Facebook and saying, I don't know what to do. And so many people, so many people gave me helpful suggestions. They posted, um, reposted things to me of people saying that they had a trailer or they had a car or that they, and, and I actually called a few people during this whole time to try and find somebody with a horse trailer that could still come. Um, and I just wasn't able to find somebody with a horse trailer. I did try. Um, but my friend Sharon said she would come with her Subaru. And so, um, and you know, Brian's dad has a truck, which we knew we could probably get our bunnies in and we thought we could either get Indigo, the big goat into maybe if I couldn't get her in my car with the other goats that I could get her in the van if we had enough help or, you know, we could get her into my friend Sharon Subaru. It just, it was just such a crazy time because we didn't know we were planning on getting some of our personal things out, 
Brian was going to be driving back and forth. We were worried about things. Um, so, you know, through friends offering help and suggestions and things like that, we were able to come up with a plan. My friend Ashley in Washington said she could take the goats, all the goats, which was amazing. Um, so we just kind of were like, okay, so now we have a plan and we were going to wait. We were in level one at this point. And so we were waiting until level two, which is, you know, when you need to be ready to leave in at a minute's notice. So obviously you can't round up five goats and however many bunnies we have and everything else that we needed to do in a minute. <laughs> so we wanted, we had to go when they said level two. So, um, so then on September 9th, I just was feeling more than anything, a sense of gratitude and amazement that my friends had within hours had pulled together and helped me come up with a plan. Um, it, it made me feel very loved. So thank you. Um, so then the next day, woke up in the morning and we were still in level one, but just walking out to the end of the road, usually you can see clear off to the power lines, which are down the road, down across the field from us and the cows grazing there and things like that from the very far end of the driveway. But all you could see was the light on at the end of our driveway, the lights on in a, on a timer or not on a timer. It's, it's on a, it senses the light thing. So we knew just looking at that, that the, the air quality had gotten really bad. Um, visibility was terrible and we were just in a blanket of smoke at that point, but still we were thinking that we probably had time. And so Brian started moving things. Um, he's an artist and so he has a lot of artwork that he's created and collected over the years and we were trying to balance you know my need to move all my babies and his need to move his babies which are his artwork so um he was moving that and we were just hoping that he could get that done in time to be able to help me um but that didn't happen um brian was at his dad's when they moved us to level two and so I was home by myself and I have a little Honda Fit <laughs> that is also not running very well. It, it's got some kind of problem that we need to get taken care of, but I haven't wanted to because of the pandemic and I've been quarantined at home trying to stay out of, out of, out of the way of humanity at this point, just because it, I can and I don't need a, a car right now was what what I was thinking but in any case we ended up really needing that car right now and so um, this is the point where I started to have to really tell myself to be calm to not panic to go with the plan and so my first step was I called Sharon and I said Sharon can you still come? And she was like, yep, I'm going to call my friend. We're going to be on our way. Um, but they were coming from Hillsboro. <laughs> so I don't know how she got here as fast as she did. She, she and her friend were here really quickly. Um, probably about 45 minutes later, they were here. So then I, very uncoordinatedly <laughs> managed to get four of the five goats into my car. So I got the two boys and the two Nigerian girls into my car. Um, and they were very unhappy with me. Um, very, very unhappy with me, but they were in the car. And once I had them in the car, I started moving my rabbits. We had to move them I had to take them off their pedestals because they're up on 
um, these pedestals, one, to keep them off the ground, and two, to, so we can collect their, their poop and urine. Um, so I had to unhook all of them, get their cages down, and then I moved them in our hand cart down to the end of the driveway because I wanted them to be as convenient and quick to load up and get gone as possible. And this was the best I could do at this point. So I loaded them all down to the end of the driveway where we were all ready to go. Um, and then I was just waiting. And so at this point, I was when I kind of snapped this picture and posted it to Facebook saying, you know, I'm evacuating. Here's what it looks like. I've got goats in my car. And, you know, mostly I that was the point when I really kind of started to feel like I was going to break because I could hear Indigo. behind me just crying because I had all the goats but not her because I tried I I couldn't pull this hundred some pound goat into the back of a Honda Fit and keep all the other goats in there at the same time I couldn't get her to go to the car she was so afraid and I kept wondering, did I do this in the wrong order? Should I take them out and put them back and try and reorder it? Are they too afraid now? Will I be able to get the rest back in? And so at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to keep checking the map to see if they change us from level two to level three when I have to go anyways and leave, leave it to go. Or will my friends make it? And be able to help me because I wasn't going to be able to do it without help. I knew that. And I could end up losing all, all the goats. Um, because they could run off when I, when I needed to have them contained. So I waited. And it was probably 40 minutes that I was there by myself waiting, hearing my goat crying, trying to keep all the animals calm. Um, and finally, Brian's dad arrived um, and Sharon arrived just before him. And we, all working together, managed to get him to go into the back of my friends Subaru and then we really quickly loaded the rabbits up into Brian's dad's truck and he battened them all down and we left and from there we sat in this mass exodus of humanity leaving leaving Oregon City and just feeling really afraid that we, it, it was really weird because looking around at the other people around me in these cars, some people looked terrified and other people were holding their cell phones out and taking pictures of my goats. Um, I was actually fairly thankful for those people because they made me laugh um, enough that I could calm down. I called some friends and they helped me just feel more normal, talk about some normal things um, because it took me three hours to get four goats in the back of my car to Ashley's in Washington. Um, and yeah. And I was really, really relieved to get there and find Indigo. 
already safe and happy and wanting her usual head scratches and snuggles and that as soon as we got the other goats out they were eating and drinking and knew they were in a safe place away from the smoke and the fire and everything else Sorry. <laughs> it, it's a little harder than I had imagined to relive this so soon. Um, so after that, I, I drove to Brian's dad's and I have no memory of that. I don't remember getting there. I don't remember driving there. Um... <laughs> And I think we pretty much immediately just went to, went to bed because it was exhausting. It was a terrible day. Um, yeah. And then the next day was September 11th. And of all the times since the 1st September 11th that we all think of. This day was a day when I most felt like I could relate because we came home and we stood with ash falling on our house and smoke all around us wondering what was going to happen and what was happening because we really didn't know at that point if they were going to be able to contain these fires at all. Um, we had hope because the morning was cool. It was a cold morning and it was, it was difficult not to think that we knew that that was enough, but we really were hoping it was. Um, so in the afternoon, they had a news conference where they finally said that, that they had been able to keep the fire out of some of the towns. Um, several miles from us where um, there was a lot more threat. I mean, where we are, we 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 were in more of a warning level where there it was urgent. People were forced to leave their homes now. And so hearing that they have been able to protect a lot of those small towns and try and keep them safe to the extent that they were able it was really heartening. Um, and they sounded so much more confident because of the weather. It, the winds had gone away. There was more humidity and, and things were just generally improved from that standpoint to where the firefighters were actually able to get in there and start assessing some things. So things were looking better and it was at that point that I went out and took a picture of the turkey feeling less like I was saying goodbye and more like I was um, saying my turkey's still here, our house is still here, it's going to be okay and I'm just grateful for all these people who are helping. Um, so then we went another day and still at level two and it was September 12th and we spent another night at Brian's dad's and came here which is yesterday now and it was we were talking about whether we felt comfortable to stay or if we thought we should go. And 
Um, we had tried to do some normal things that day. Um, I, I cleaned up some of the messes we made in our evacuation and Brian worked on his YouTube videos. Um, we had some more normal meals. Um, and it just did some work in the house and tried to clear some of the smoke out of here and things like that. And so the end of the day, we were, we were debating on going back to his dad's or staying here. And we decided to stay here. Um, and that's when we got the alert saying that they were putting us back down to level one. And we, it was such a relief. Um, yeah, I, I can't thank all the firefighters who came to help Oregon enough because they've really protected us. Thank you. You wanted to mention Wilco? Oh, um, one thing that did happen during all this was on the morning of September 10th, I had ordered a rabbit cage from Wilco. I tried to get two um, because we didn't have enough cages to transport all our rabbits. And so... Um, because of the swiftness of the evacuation on the 10th, I didn't have, neither Brian nor I were able to go get that cage and assemble it. Um, but on September 11th, when we came back, our Oregon City will call was still open. And so Brian was able to go get that and I put it together and we were very grateful that Wilco stayed open because we were able to get things to help protect our animals and to help keep them safe and to make us feel so much better that our, our, these animals in our care were being cared for. Um, so, so we were very grateful that they stayed open, even though we were in a level two evacuation. So thank you to them. Now, <clears throat> last night you baked some cookies. <laughs> was that mostly to mask the smoke in the house, or was that also a stress relief? <laughs> I I think um, it was probably 50-50, Brian. <laughs> I bake cookies when um, when... It's not even so much for me. I think about the taste. I think it comforts Brian to have a nice warm cookie. But for me, I the smell is very relaxing and homey. And I needed that. I had all day been boiling these sage and herbs and things. Trying to get rid of that smell. And not really succeeding. <laughs> so baking the cookies made the house smell nice and like normal home for a little while which was great um and just the process of doing it made me feel more normal yeah <laughs>